I'm Hazel, and today we are going to be taking a look at what to do on a fresh level 60 character. The goal here is getting kind of caught up in gear and ready to begin the endgame. For the sake of this video, I'm going to assume no organized groups. Of course, if you have four or more friends willing to help you, your best bet is going to be to have them drag you through um, organized content, like every Mythic Zero in a full armor stack could feed you 184 loot pretty quickly. Of course, getting gear is only part of getting set up at endgame, and not everybody has a crew ready to carry them. I'm also going to assume that you do not want to PvP. If you do want to PvP, then grinding honor and conquest and using the gear vendors can get you item level 200 gear very easily and then you can upgrade it as you grind rating. Um, that's a valid gearing path even for PvEers, so go nuts if you want to. Vendors are here, Battleground Qs are there, have fun. However, you will still want to have Conduits, Legendaries, Renown anyway, so even if you decide to go that route, you can still get started as suggested here. So, what does it mean to be ready for endgame on a level 60 character in Shadowlands? We've got a couple of different objectives and they do interconnect, so unfortunately you can't really skip any if you want to be set up to go. First is Renown, and you want Renown to unlock Soulbinds, and it will also help very strongly with gear. You are also going to need Conduits, and those will go in your Soulbinds. You will want to craft your first Legendary, and later upgrade it, and maybe like a second Legendary, but let's just start with the one. And you're going to want to get your gear and item level caught up, or at least scraped off the floor where you start at. Um, so you might start at item level like 130, 150, 160, depending on how much content you did while you were leveling, and it would be nice if we could get you to like 200 or so to either get you started in organized content or just to make the solo outdoor content go much more smoothly. So, step one, the first thing to do on a fresh character is to make sure you have completed the initial storyline that is needed to unlock all of the stuff. If this is your very first character and you do not have any other level 60s in Shadowlands yet, you want to follow the quest at the top of your log marked campaign. Anything in there, you want to do it. If this is an alt and you've chosen Threads of Fate, then you're already done and you're good. If this is an alt and you did not level with Threads of Fate and you are now level 60, you want to go to Fate Scribe, Rostel, and Oribos here to skip the rest of the story and get started for real. For step two, I like to check the auction house for cheap crafted gear. This step is optional and you're going to replace it very quickly, so don't spend too much gold, but it can make some of the early process much less painful, and if it's very cheap or you're just very rich, go for it, knock yourself out. So that, along with my leveling dungeon gear, got my fresh character to around item level 150-ish, but don't worry if you're lower. For step three, starting now and from now on, you want to check world quests periodically. I'm using an add-on here called World Quest List that will kind of organize all the rewards into a big table so you can very quickly find upgrades in your World Quest rewards. You are looking for gear upgrades and conduits that you do not have yet. The item level of World Quest rewards will improve as you get your renown caught up, but there is always more World Quests, so if you see an upgrade, don't wait, just go get it, there will be more. Also, as you're picking up conduits from World Quests, make sure that you turn them in at the earliest opportunity at your little conduit table. Uh, so that you do not get duplicates. For step four, it is now time to focus on catch up renown. We are doing this to unlock the campaign and to upgrade that world quest loot. This process, catch up renown, does involve some randomness, but overall it comes pretty quickly. Here are the sources. The world boss every week will give you one guaranteed catch up renown and chance at decent loot. There is no item level requirement to do the world boss. You should be able to get into a group just fine or, you know, like hang out and just tag it if you can't. So make sure that you do your world boss every week. This is the first thing I went and did. Easy renown and if you get lucky and you get some loot dropping, that's not too bad either. The other really easy source of catch up renown is going to be your callings. If your calling is going to give you renown, it will say so on the quest log before you complete it so you can figure out which ones are going to give you renown. They are all worth doing anyways because the chest can contain conduits and occasional gear on their own, but make sure that you extra prioritize any epic quality calling chests because those are going to have better stuff in them. Another thing that you really want to do is make sure that you keep up with any and all quest marked campaign. They will be at the top of your quest log, the markers on the map for them will look this, like this little banner shape instead of the usual circle. You want to keep up with the Covenant campaign for the Renown, but also it's going to introduce you to the Maw, to Torghast, to Legendary, so you have to do it to unlock all of that good stuff. So just do any campaign quest that you can find, and if you can't find any, then check to see when your next one is. It will either tell you that you need a higher Renown, or if there's one available, it will tell you to go and pick it up. Do all of that and make sure that you keep the covenant gear as they give it to you even if you get an upgrade and replace it you get a better piece hang on to that base piece of covenant gear because we're going to be able to upgrade it later 
while you're catching up your renown, you may hit points where you need more renown to continue your campaign and you don't have any more callings available. And at that point, you can either wait for more callings if you really want to do this solo, or if you're prepared to do some random group content, uh, nothing too hard, I promise. Gear, renown, conduits, and legendary powers are all going to come from both Dungeon Finder and LFR. So if you're up for it, queue for the highest tier um, as in like normal dungeons, heroic dungeons, or LFR that your item level will allow. This is going to give you, like I said, renown, but also conduits, legendary powers, um, gear, you know, all stuff that you need. Most of my catch-up renown in this process came from random heroic dungeons. If you are going to go do dungeons, make sure that you stop by the Idylia and Oribos first. You want to go downstairs and pick up the trading favors quest before you do any dungeons. If you do the dungeons that they are asking for, it's going to give you some free extra anima, which you're just going to want anyways. So for the Dungeon Finder, you can queue for normal dungeons right away, and those are going to give you item level 158 loot. Once you have hit an overall item level of 155, they're going to let you queue for heroic dungeons that offer 171 loot. And once you hit item level 170, they're going to let you queue for LFR that offers 187 loot. If you're looking at your item level and you're just short of one of those breakpoints, there are a couple things you can do to maybe help you get caught up to let you into heroic dungeons or LFR. The first one is getting your first legendary crafted. As you got through those early campaign quests, you should have been introduced to the Maw, to Torghast, and to the Rune Carver. To make your legendary, you are going to need four things. You are going to need Soul Ash, you are going to need a base item, you are going to need two missives, and you are going to need your power. Uh, let's talk about the Soul Ash first. If you have done Torghast before on another character, you are going to find all previously cleared layers open to you. So I have fully cleared regular Torghast on my main, I've cleared all eight layers, and that means that on my alt I was able to jump right into layer eight if I wanted to. At that item level of sort of 150 to 160-ish, I did manage to solo standard Torghast layer eight as Holy Priest, just using the same strategies I used in my higher item level main. On a fresh character, if you're less confident, or maybe you're a spec that is not quite so overpowered in Torghast, you may need to go slower and jump in a couple levels down, maybe at a 4 or 5, but most of your power is going to come from the Torghast powers and not so much from your character's item level, so don't worry too much about starting too slow. You're going to get a lot more Soul Ash from doing those higher levels. If you're nervous about it, you can pick up food, flask, potions, oils, you could try to pug yourself into a group, or you could check out my Torghast guide. I made a video on that. You don't need to solo an 8, I'm just letting you know that it's possible on some specs and may save you some time. Once you have scraped together 1,250 Soul Ash, you are able to craft your first Legendary at the lowest item level. You are going to need a base item, which is available off the Auction House, you are going to need two missives to determine the secondary stats, and then you're going to need a power. If you're lucky, the power that you want, and I'd recommend checking Class Guide to see what the good ones are. If you're lucky, the power that you want came from an early raid boss or from a dungeon, then it, and it dropped fairly easily. The power could be a little bit of a sticking point, especially if you're only planning on crafting one Legendary and you don't want to craft like a starter one now and get your good one later. Legendary powers are account bound, so if you are going to use a universal legendary power, or if you're like a weirdo like me that has alts of the same class and you've already farmed, like I've already farmed priest powers, I did not need to get the priest power again because it's already added to my collection. However, if you're like most people, your alt is probably of a different class and you're probably going to need a new power. Um, I recommend taking a look at a class guide to figure out what the experts are using for legendaries for your spec, and then once you know what you need, you can take a look at the power tab here in your adventure journal. So Shift J opens up the adventure journal, and then this tab has a list of all of your powers, and then the sources for the ones that you don't have. If it's from raid, it can drop from raid finder. If it's from dungeons, it can drop from dungeon finder. Some powers are going to come from specific world bosses, but for the most part, you should be able to farm for the power that you're looking for while also getting catch up renown and catch up gear. Once you've got your four things, just visit the rune carver, slap them together, and that's an easy piece of 190 gear that's also going to give you a pretty substantial power upgrade. Uh, you will want to upgrade that legendary and item level later if you're going to play this character more seriously, but the great bulk of the benefit that you're going to get from your legendary just comes from having it. Um, the item level upgrade is just stats. The power is the power even at item level 190. The other way for you to catch up your item level and kind of the main gear progression path for solo players is going to be upgrading your Covenant Armor with Anima. Each piece can be taken all the way up to item level 197, depending on your progress through the Covenant campaign. It does take quite a bit of Anima to upgrade the full set, but the pieces of gear that you receive later in your Covenant campaign questline are going to be awarded to you at a higher upgrade level already, so you don't need to spend as much on those. Also, when you finish your Covenant campaign, which should unlock at Renown 22, you're going to get a Raid Finder quality weapon, which weapons can be a little bit tough to find, so that was a pretty big deal, at least for my alt. Another thing to take a look at while you're gearing up is any special events that might be in effect. 
holiday bosses might drop gear, for example, but mostly we're looking at the weekly event. Um, so check your adventure journal for the weekly quest. Time Walking Weeks will offer item level 158 gear dropping from the Time Walking Dungeons directly, but if you do five of them, you're going to get a cache with a item level 200 normal Nathria piece in it, and that has no minimum item level to do, so that's available on a very fresh character whenever Time Walking Weeks are up. When your Renown catches up to level 29, you're going to be getting item level 194-ish items from World Quests with the occasional 203 gear piece from Callings. You are specifically hoping for rings and trinkets, because those pieces you will not get through Covenant Armor. Once you've got your loot, don't forget that you can enchant your new gear. You can apply enchants to these slots of weapon, cloak, chest, bracers, boots, gloves, and rings. What I like to do for this is pick up a stack of really cheap enchants in each slot to use while I'm replacing gear often, and then kind of invest in the bis enchants once I'm more stable and less likely to immediately throw the gear out. But I do like to use those cheap enchants on the gear that I'm getting caught up with, and it doesn't cost too much to do so. People make a lot of them while they're leveling enchanting, so it shouldn't cost too much. Uh, take a look at it. And that should get you pretty much set up. At this point, you are going to continue to do callings, continue to keep an eye on world quests, do the highest level dungeon finder content that you can get into, finish upgrading your covenant armor as you get more anima if you think you're going to keep wearing it, kill the world boss every week, keep plugging away at Torghast to upgrade your legendary, and you should be more than ready to embark on the endgame path of your choice. Thank you for watching! If I have missed any really great catch-up tips, please leave them in the comments so that we can all be enlightened collectively. Best of luck catching up, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye!